architect. It was the first time we did it since man walked on the moon. We cut taxes, and we had a $5 trillion projected surplus when I left. That's hard work. Governor. Fiscal discipline. Know what you're doing. Creativity. This stuff is fantasy, just like getting rid of you, Medicare and Medicaid. You said yesterday. Come on. That's just not... You don't scare senior citizens with that. It's not responsible. Well, let, let, let's just get more pointed about it. You said yesterday that you were hearing proposals that were just crazy from your colleagues. Who yeah. are you talking about? Well, I mean, right here, to talk about we're just going to have a 10% tithe, and that's how we're going to fund the government, and we're, we're going to just fix everything yeah. with... Uh, because, you know, 10% may be good enough for God, that we're just but gonna this government is not we're good enough for the federal million government. <laughs> Americans or 10 million people <laughs> out of like, this country, about leaving their slaves. children here in this country and dividing families. Folks, we got to wake up. We, we cannot elect somebody that doesn't know how to do the job. You've got to pick somebody who has experience, somebody that has the know-how, the discipline. And I spent my entire lifetime balancing federal budgets, growing jobs, the same in Ohio. And I will go back Governor? to Washington with my plan, Governor, and I will you, present Governor. it within 100 days, and it will pass, <laughs> and we will be strong again. Mr. Thank you, Trump. 30 seconds. First of all, John got lucky with a thing called fracking, okay? He hit oil. He got lucky with fracking. Believe me, that's why Ohio is doing well. Number, and that's important for you to know. Number two, this is the man that was a managing general partner at Lehman Brothers when it went down the tubes and almost took every one of us with us, including Ben and myself. Because I was there and I watched what happened and Lehman Brothers started it all. He was on the board and he was a managing <laughs> general partner. Okay. And just thirdly, I he think was so Kasich's nice. guts are on the floor he was right such now. Such a nice guy. <laughs> I think he's and he bleeding said, out. Oh, I'm yeah. never going to attack. But then <laughs> At least now he's about to attack hey, Trump for his casino. That's why he's on the end. I think Trump just is this way. got nasty. So you know what? You can have him. Okay, <laughs> let, me just, let, me, look, yeah, let me let me just <laughs> let it. me let me respond. Oh. First of all. Ohio does have an energy industry, but we're diversified. We're one of the <laughs> fastest growing states in the country. We came right. back from the dead. And you know what? It works very, very well. And secondly, when you talk about me being on the board of Lehman Brothers, I wasn't on the board of Lehman Brothers. I was a banker and I was proud of it. And I traveled the country and learned how people make jobs. We ought to have politicians <laughs> who not only have government experience, but know how the CEOs and the job creators work. My state is doing great across the board. And guess what? In 2011, I got Governor, a deal in agreement Governor, with the board a lot of and he tried to take credit for it four years later. It's a joke. Thank you, Governor. Uh, Becky, Dr. Carson, Becky, if you'd me, like a 10%. Let me, let me give 30 seconds to Dr. Carson. Since to I was attacked, we'll to too. To Thank you. Uh, let me just say. Uh, if you're talking about an $18 trillion economy, you're talking about a 15% tax on your gross domestic product, you're talking about $2.7 trillion. We have a budget closer to $3.5 trillion. Mm -hmm. But if you also apply that same 15% to uh, several other things, including corporate taxes uh, and including uh, the capital gains taxes, you make that amount up pretty quickly. So that's not by any stretch pie in the sky. Becky, if, if you yeah. want a 10% flat tax where the numbers add up, I rolled up my tax plan today. You can find it online at tedcruz.org. It is a simple flat tax where for individuals, a family of four pays nothing on the first 36,000. After that, you pay 10% as a flat tax going up. The billionaire and the working man, no hedge fund manager pays less than his secretary. On top of that, there's a business flat tax of 16%. Now that applies universally to giant corporations that with lobbyists right now are not paying taxes and to small businesses. And you wanted to know the numbers. The Tax Foundation, which has scored every one of our plans, shows that this plan will allow the economy to generate 4.9 million jobs, to raise wages over 12%, and to generate 14% growth, and it costs with dynamic scoring less than a trillion dollars. Those are the hard numbers, and every single income decile sees a double-digit increase in after-tax income. Senator, There's going to be a lot of fact-checking on this. Yeah. Yeah. Because they can throw out all these numbers taxes, and figures, we can and it's going to be a lot of, saw, uh, lot of articles earlier, from that. the earlier debate, they had a whole fact-checking guy. He just stood there and like, well, this isn't true, and that's not true. Yeah. Yeah, I imagine a lot of that tomorrow. Yeah, today we're going to have more facts. Today we're going to have more numbers. And there'll be a lot of uh, vetting of these numbers that will have to go on tomorrow. We can't bet this real time.
But again, I have to say, they're not talking about doing anything on the spending side. You notice that? Mm -hmm. This is a Republican debate. Nobody's talking about cutting spending. Evidently, everything the government does is absolutely essential to the Republican. They can't cut anything. Get it done. We have talked about tax reform in every single election for decades. It never happens. And but politicians always say it's so complicated. But you wanna, Nobody you but a bring... politician can figure it out. The truth is this the big problem we need a leader in Washington who understands how to get something done. But you want to bring not that to talk about it, not pages. to propose it, to is, get it you done. Bring the they need to start pages. referring her to her not as the former CEO of HP, they need to refer to her as the fired. CEO of HP. Remember, she did to their stock what the uh, Greek, what happened to the Greek banks. They lost 50% of their uh, value, their stocks did as they went through this economic crisis this last summer. That's what Carly Fiorina did for HP and she was fired. And yet she's running on her record as some high tech CEO. Yeah. Absolutely incredible. Pretty ridiculous. <laughs> I guess they're counting on people not to know that, what you just brought up. Well, I tell you what, Barbara Boxer just just leveled her, leveled her with one 30 second commercial. She is probably the most vulnerable person running for presidency, Carly Fiorina. She will not be able to go anywhere with the record that she has. You've been a young man in a hurry ever since you won your first election in your 20s. You've had a big accomplishment in the Senate. An immigration bill providing a path to citizenship that conservatives in your party hate and even you don't support anymore. Now you're skipping more votes than any senator to run for president. Why not slow down, get a few more things done first, or at least finish He's repeating what the you talking saw. points yeah, of Jeb Bush. That's, exactly what the that's Jeb Bush's now. talking points. That's why they came out of this meeting with mommy and daddy that Jeb Bush had this weekend. Their talking points were that Rubio, he's very concerned about Rubio because Rubio has leapfrogged uh, Jeb in the polls. And the talking points that came out of that were come after him as an Obama senator, somebody who's not finished one term, been largely absent, and hasn't accomplished anything. We have more businesses closing than starting. We have a world that's out of control and has grown dangerous and a president that is weakening our military and making our foreign policy unstable and unreliable in the eyes of our allies and our adversaries continue to grow stronger. We have a, they say there's no bipartisanship in Washington. We have a 19 trillion dollar bipartisan debt and it continues to grow as we borrow money from companies that, from countries that do not like us to pay for government we cannot afford. Want to see if he votes against this, uh, this, this debt ceiling increase that the House put in there. Paul Ryan O said uh, he, he didn't like it, he thought it was awful. They'd done it secretly behind closed doors, you know, like the trade deals, but then he voted for it. We'll see if he'll join uh, Rand Paul on the filibuster or if he'll even show up. Maybe he won't even show up. He has, he's missed most of the votes. He missed the vote on CISA. He, was, he didn't vote for that. Yeah. But we know where he is on that. It's actually evidence of he the bias favor, that exists in the American media well, today. But do you hate your job? Let me, let me answer your question on the Sun Sentinel editorial today. Back in 2004, one of my predecessors to the Senate by the name of Bob Graham, a Democrat, ran for president, missing over 30% of his votes. I don't recall them calling for his resignation. Is that the standard? Later that year, in 2004, John Kerry ran for president, missing close to 60 to 70 percent of his votes. I don't recall the Sun. In fact, the Sun Sentinel endorsed him. In 2008, Barack Obama missed 60 or 70 percent of his oh. votes, and the same newspaper endorsed him again. So this is another example of the double standard that exists in this country <coughs> between the mainstream media and the conservative media. Well, it's the talking points from the Bush family that uh, that the mainstream media is picking up. I don't support Rubio. I don't think he's even qualified to run as a natural born citizen, as my understanding of what a natural born citizen is. So. constituent service, which means that he shows up to work. Uh, he got endorsed by the Sun Sentinel because he was the most talented guy in the field. He's a gifted and politician. As, a, as evidence that this is a setup, they go directly to Jeb Bush. First, they ask him the talking points from the Bush family this weekend, then they go to Jeb Bush for rebuttal. It's exactly what we saw yeah. with uh, Hillary Clinton and Sanders and yeah. O'Malley on either yeah. side just bookending her going, we support her, everything yeah. she does. I'm the biggest supporter of Hillary. <laughs> exactly. I get to respond, right? 30 seconds. 30 right. seconds. Well, it's interesting. Over the last few weeks, I've listened to Jeb as he walked around the country and said that you're modeling your campaign after John McCain, that you're going to launch a furious comeback the way he did by fighting hard in New Hampshire and places like that, carrying well, your own McCain bag lost. at the airport. 
You know how many votes John McCain missed when he was carrying out that furious comeback that you're now modeling it I'm, under? He wasn't my concern. No, Jeb, I don't I remember. Senator. Well, let me tell you, I don't remember you ever complaining about John McCain's vote record. The only reason why you're doing it now is because we're running for the same position, and someone has convinced you that attacking me is going to help you. Well, I've been. Here's the bottom line. I'm not. My campaign. Mommy and Daddy told me. It's going to be about the future of America. <laughs> it's not going to be about attacking anyone else on this stage. It's always nice to, to see a piggy bush squirm. Bush. <laughs> I'm not running against. Yeah, he didn't Governor like bush. that comment. I'm not running against anyone on the stage. I'm running for. President, because there is no way we can elect Hillary Clinton John. to continue the policies of hey, Barack Obama. I think there's a big issue. I think there's a big issue. I've got a question for Governor Bush. Like John Harwood, there's a bigger I, issue. Are you going to talk to Randall Paul Harwood? Right? No. <laughs> That's why I put him on the end. I haven't said anything to Governor Paul. So, like, he's even out of the camera shot, so you don't even have to worry about him. People just kind of forget about him. Hey, guys, let's jump over to Darren McBreen in the uh, Twitter room and see what's going on there. <laughs> Well, Go ahead, Darren. Uh, yeah, I'm yeah. here. I notice these guys are talking about Hillary Clinton and the Hillary Clinton supporters. There are a few of them that have surfaced on Twitter and they're showing their support for the evil Hillary right now. And in typical liberal fashion, they always automatically assume if you if you don't want to vote for Hillary Clinton, well, that automatically makes you a Jeb Bush supporter or just a Bush supporter in general, you know. And I've always thought it's funny how. Most people that like the Clintons, they can't stand the Bush family. And most people who like the Bush family, they can't stand the Clintons. But in real life, these guys actually hang out together. The Bushes and, and, <laughs> and the Clintons, yeah. they vacation together. <laughs> they hang out together. Do you guys remember when Barbara Bush was in an interview and she said that she loves Bill Clinton, that he's family? Like a son. And then there was that time when George W. Bush was being interviewed and he said that Bill Clinton is my brother from a different mother, and that <laughs> makes Hillary Clinton my sister-in-law. You guys remember that? That's oh, yeah. Right. That's right. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's, oh, it's a look, fixed there game. There they are golfing together. Oh, what Aww, a cozy couple. Buddies. Look at that. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's, it's that left-right paradigm. You know, if you're not for one of these Republican candidates, then you're for Hillary Clinton or whatever, mm -hmm. right? That's and how I they mean, try to frame you, try to yeah. shame you into voting one way or another. Exactly, exactly. Everyone, Ms. Fiorina, I'd like to ask you a question. You are running for president of the United States because of your record running Hewlett Packard. But the stock market <laughs> is usually a fair indicator of the performance oh, of a CEO, yeah. and the market was not kind to you. Um, someone yeah, who invested a dollar the in your company lost. the day you took office had lost half of that dollar by the day you left. Obviously, you've talked in the past about what a difficult time He's it not was smiling. for technology companies. <laughs> Anybody wow. who's following the market knows that your stock I've seen that look before. I can imagine what's going through her head. <laughs> I'm going to claw her eyes out. That's what she's mm -hmm. thinking. Yeah. <laughs> she's like using Jedi mind tricks on her. Why you think we should hire you now? You know, the NASDAQ dropped 80%. 80%, and it took 15 years from the NASDAQ to recover. I was recruited to HP to save a company. It was a company that had grown into a bloated, inept bureaucracy that cost too much and delivered too little. You know, I think we need to do some fact checking on that. It had missed. I don't think that the NASDAQ declined 80% when her the value of her company declined 50%. I think she was in the late, uh, I think she was before the 2000 decline, she got fired. Mm. And she was fired, by the way. On innovation, on leading in every market and every product segment. And yes, it was a very difficult time. However, we saved 80,000 jobs. We went on to grow to 160,000 jobs. And scores of technology companies literally went out of business like Gateway, taking all their jobs with them. The truth is, I had to make Donald some Donald Trump is like, what does she say? I think actually <laughs> Did you say it? Because he knows I that it was her trying to, her leverage buy out a compact that took the company down and caused massive layoffs. She's fired like. 30 something thousand uh, uh, people, if I recall correctly. I have to fact check myself. But. And said, you know what? We were wrong. She was right. She was a great CEO. She'd oh, be yeah. a great president of the United States because the leadership who's, who's she brought say to this? HP is exactly the leadership we need in Washington, D.C. Mrs. Fiorina, it's interesting that you bring up Mr. Perkins because he said a lot of very questionable things. Last year in an interview, he said that he thinks wealthy people should get more votes than poor people. I think his quote was that if you pay zero dollars in taxes, you should get zero votes. If you pay a million dollars, you should get a million votes. Is this the type of person you want to defend? Well, Isn't that the system we have now? Like yeah, that's pretty much good. <laughs> that's the system we have. <laughs> Nevertheless, one of the things that I think people don't always understand is how accountable a CEO actually is. 
So, you know, I had to report results every 90 days in excruciating detail. I had to answer every single question about every Russell, single she result. I wanted to bet she was not doing that work. <laughs> yeah, She exactly. was not the hard worker in that scenario. She <laughs> was the desk sitter and the order giver, but she was not doing the work. You mean, Rob, you don't think she was running around collecting the data and plugging it into a spreadsheet and creating the nah. PowerPoint?